Foreign Minister, we're looking forward to what you have to say, and I think that for those of you who are so minded, um, a text of what the Minister says will be available later uh, on the website. Minister. Thank you. Chancellor, Director, first of all, let me say that Oxford is not exactly the, the right place for my terrible English, globish English of foreign ministers. And I'm sorry. I hope uh, you will be patient. But uh, I need to improve my English and I need to test. <laughs> you have the victims. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. I am honored to, to follow such prestigious speakers. And why I, I hope to, to, to remain in charge for the next four years. <laughs> It's always difficult in Italy, but uh, I think that, that we need stability in order to achieve the difficult goals that I had to, on which I had to speak during my speech. Let me start by quoting a passage from the Berlin Declaration marking the 50th anniversary of the Roma Treaties. We have a unique way of living and working together in the European Union. This is expressed through the democratic interaction of the member states and European institutions. Yes, the democratic interaction between nation states and common institutions has been the key for the EU's unique evolution. European project was not only an ambitious idea, but a truly great success, exactly because it managed to harness the ambitions, the skills, and the best historical legacies of each member country in pursuit of a set of common and open-ended goals. Essentially, this has been, this has been the European unique way of overcoming old-style nationalism. The problem that confronts us today is of a different nature. The challenges are no longer just intra-European, but have become global. Therefore, the question we should address is a clear cut. Will an organism created under a regional logic be capable of meeting global challenges? In the abstract, the answer is simple. The union is now even more necessary than a half century ago. This is a basic assumption I believe we share as political leaderships across the continent. Europe is an even more necessary protagonist in this age of globalization with its winners, with its losers, its many hopefuls. And in this age of shifting risks and threats, Europe is the best way we have to meet a number of complex challenges while safeguarding our democratic political system. No nation state taking individually will ever be capable of that. Italy's position thus is that the core of any new treaty has largely to coincide with part one of the 2004 treaty, signed in Rome by all the heads of state and government. Only this would allow a coherent reform and consolidation to EU institutions. Minor amendments of the Nice Treaty would not suffice. There may be many Eurosceptics in Britain 
but very few of them really wish the UK to simply leave the Union. Therefore, rational arguments can be made for the UK <coughs> to actively promote its own vision of Europe rather than just oppose the vision of other countries. The role of the UK is key because on a more general level, I believe that a political informal core is indispensable to a well-functioning Europe. The Franco-German NG has been such a force for decades, but now needs to be broadened in light of challenges that differ significantly from those of the past. Italy views itself as active protagonist of this transformation of the European setup. From the foreign minister of Italy, you have to expect, as a way of conclusion, a statement of confidence in the EU institutions. I will not disappoint you. A statement of confidence, there is. I'm confident. <laughs> but I will, I'm confident. I think that uh, the pose of reflection was useful. And uh, everybody understands that uh, we have to move. I had the experience of the European Council at 15. And uh, recently, I, I proved the Council at 27. It's different. And uh, I was already in favor of, vote, of majority voting uh, for principal reasons. But today, I think we need a solution. We need a solution to have majority voting this time. Absolutely. You can believe that uh, Italy prefers European seat because uh, asking an Italian seat would be unrealistic. Maybe. But uh, my opinion is that an European seat would be more powerful and important for the Europeans. Maybe to now, today, it's not realistic to propose such reforms of the structure of the United Nations. But more and more, we, we have a new protagonist <coughs> in the international community. I think the problem will become actual. Eccoci qui con il ministro della Rema, la nostra domanda è quanto l'Aquila Cultura può aiutare nel processo di unificazione dei paesi. Guarda, io la invito a Roma, c'è una mostra straordinaria nella quale ciascuno dei 27 paesi ha collocato un'opera d'arte significativa della, della storia dell'arte di del ciascun paese europeo. Ed è veramente un viaggio attraverso la civiltà europea che dimostra anche quanto siano profondi i collegamenti tra le diverse parti dell'Europa e tra i diversi momenti della nostra storia.